Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Tyranid Trigon from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me out the Trigon for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and you can go and check them out for yourselves. Also guys, every time you purchase something from the link in the description box below, it helps my YouTube channel. So please don't forget to use that description box if you do want to purchase anything from Goblin Gaming. I painted the Trigon up in a relatively fast manner. It took me about two hours. So I've painted this up to a pretty reasonable tabletop standard. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along with the tutorial and replicate everything that you see in the video today. So, uh, as always guys, go grab yourselves a nice hot drink, or a nice cold beer, and we'll get started. I start off by using Alclad 2's Glossy Black Primer. There's a really good reason that I'm using uh, a gloss primer guys, and it's because uh, I want the reflective properties of the metallic paints to be as highly shiny as I possibly can and the gloss base will help the metallic paints that we're going to use to reflect even more. It's important to know guys that these paints are lacquer based and they're quite harmful if inhaled. I wear a mask and I've got a spray booth guys so I'm well ventilated so make sure you're well ventilating if you're going to use these Alclad paints. The Alclad Primer is really thin guys and it goes down super smooth. I'm spraying at about 18 to 20 psi here and I'm working at about 3 to 4 inches away and I'm just ever so slightly pulling back on the airbrush trigger and I'm letting the primer build up nice and slowly. I want to take this opportunity while the miniature is being primed to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters out there. I really appreciate all the support I'm getting at the moment on Patreon guys and if you do want to uh, support and pledge your support to me on Patreon there'll be a link in the description box down below where you can go and check it out and as I say guys whether it's a dollar or more everything's appreciated and uh, yeah I just want to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You probably can see that the gloss black primer is really starting to look really glossy and really really nice guys. As I say, build it up slowly. Don't let the paint run on the model. Um, if you spray for too long in any one spot, you run the risk of um, saturating the model with paint and then you'll leave drip marks and those sorts of things, which we definitely don't want. So keep the airbrush moving. Don't focus on one spot for too long and uh, just let the primer build up nice and slowly. It's important to use Alclad's airbrush cleaner while using Alclad lacquers. Because it's a lacquer paint, water will just clog the paint up in your airbrush. So make sure if you are using Alclad paints, you pick up their airbrush cleaner as well. Now the fun's really going to begin, guys. We're going to start by using Green Stuff World's Tropical Green from their Color Shift set number two and I'm working at 20 psi here about three to four inches away from the model and I'm just letting the paint come out nice and slowly and I'm building up a really nice smooth metallic finish to the model it's really important to shake the paints uh, that you have guys to make sure they're thoroughly mixed and this is even more important with the metallic paints as the metallic particles separate from the medium. So make sure you give these paints an absolute thorough shaking and uh, they'll come out really nice when you start spraying them out your airbrush. One of my Facebook followers asked me to talk about drying times. 
Now the drying times for the lacquer primer is about two hours. Uh, so I left the primer a couple of hours before I went in with the green stuff world tropical green color and the tropical green color was left another couple of hours uh, before I actually did any other painting so the actual miniature took about two hours to paint but there is times between the painting where I uh, left it to dry As you can see here guys that color shift is looking absolutely beautiful guys i absolutely love these paints and they've got so many varied applications from custom space marine chapters to what you're seeing that i'm working on here with the tyranids here you can see that i'm just turning the miniature rain making sure that i've got all areas of it hit with the tropical green color Here I'm painting using Games Workshop's Zandri Dust, which is a base paint from the range. I thinned it down so I will be painting in two thin layers to get a nice even coverage. But all I'm doing it is painting all of the Tyranid model apart from the carapace which is going to stain that lovely tropical green colour shift metallic paint. I mentioned earlier in the video that I wanted to paint in a relatively fast manner. Now to achieve this I actually started painting with a Windsor & Newton Series 7 size 3 brush. And this is a really big brush and it holds a lot of paint. Uh, so if you're speed painting like I am be careful guys. Uh, if I'm completely honest uh, don't do as I do and take your time use a smaller brush and you'll get an even better result than I did. And here you can see what the Tyranid looks like with all the bone colour painted. With the contrast of the bone colour and the carapace of the tropical green colour, it's really starting to pop even at this early stage. All the talons and teeth and all the sharp pokey bits, for want of a better word guys, are going to be painted with Games Workshop's base colour corn red. Again you can see me using that big brush guys and it's easily able to uh, paint these talons really quickly but again guys just because I'm using a big brush doesn't mean to say it's the right thing to do. I'd recommend taking your time and using a smaller brush. And here you can see what the Trigon looks like with all the talons painted. With just these three colour separations guys, the red, the bone and the metallic green, it's starting to look really nice. Now we're going to add some shadows to the bone. So I'm, here I'm using Games Workshop Seraphim Sepia. I wanted this to be a really strong effect so I didn't dilute the seraphim sepia and I'll apply it neat straight out of the pot. And 
here you can see what the trigon looks like after all of the seraphine sepia had been applied to it and dried. Here I'm going to start using Games Workshop layer paint of Shabti Bone. I'm going to start dry brushing over all the bone areas to pick out all the top surfaces of the bone and make it uh, pop. I could have airbrushed the Shabti Bone and that would leave a really nice effect as well. But to be honest, uh, time was of the essence and my loft is very, very cold and I didn't want to spend an hour or two masking off all of that uh, carapace. So I decided to just dry brush the bone instead. And here you can see what the trigon looks like after the dry brushing of the bone has been completed. Now I'm going to airbrush some Vallejo Game Air Bloody Red. Now it's really important that you be careful here guys if you're doing what I'm doing and painting uh, highlights on the corn red areas of the trigon without masking I was really careful to pick the angle as best as I possibly could to get the highlights and make sure that I didn't get any overspray on the trigon if you're new to airbrushing guys and you're not that comfortable with the airbrush I highly recommend you mask in here and the masking tape that I recommend is Tamiya masking tape as it's low tack and what that basically means is that it won't pull the paint up from the miniature you don't want to use household masking tape as this will probably lead to uh, paint scuffs and scratches and it will ruin the paint job so spend an extra couple of pounds and get the proper stuff for your miniatures so uh, pick up some Tamiya masking tape While I'm going around the model painting highlights with the bloody red colour I just want to say um, to all the people that follow me on Facebook and Instagram thank you very much uh, for following me and if you've got any questions or queries that you'd like answered head on over to my Facebook page and uh, leave me a personal message and I'll do my best to get back to you and also like my Facebook page because I update way more than I do on YouTube uh, so uh, yeah uh, please head on over to my Instagram and Facebook pages please guys now I'm gonna add another highlight to the talons all on the Trigon and I'm going to use Vallejo Game Air orange fire as you can see using the orange fire it's really making those talons start to pop now and giving a really nice cool colour transition the airbrush that I'm using is an Awata Eclipse CS airbrush and it was sent to me out by airbrushes.com uh, some time ago and it's still an absolutely fantastic workhorse airbrush and if you're getting your first airbrush I highly recommend this particular airbrush Now we're going to paint the base. I'm using Games Workshop's base paint Mournfang Brown. Now this isn't airbrush ready so you need to thin it down. I thinned it down roughly about three uh, drops of water to one drop of paint.
after the base had thoroughly dried, I'm coming back in with Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade. I want this effect to be nice and strong so I paint straight from out the pot undiluted. After the Agrax Earth shade had dried thoroughly, I come back in with Zandri Dust and dry brush all of the base. I don't show you this on camera as I forgot to hit the record button, but yeah, just to get the finishing touches it's nice to get another layer of texture on the model. And here we have our finished Tyranid Trigon. I absolutely loved painting this Tyranid guys. It's such a cool looking miniature. And using those paint shifting colours by Green Stuff World. That just look absolutely awesome guys. And it looks even better in person. So I hope you follow along with this tutorial and you get some great results yourselves guys um, if you've enjoyed this video guys it means a great deal to me if you hit that like button and if you leave a comment below I love reading all your comments guys and I'll reply to as many of them as I possibly can and lastly thanks once again to my youtube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming don't forget to check the description box down below and thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.